Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to our series Health and Fasting. In this episode, we're going to be talking about spirituality and fasting. Now, people may be wondering what has that got to do with medicine and the health of an individual? Well, as doctors, we have to be aware of the whole person, not just their physical health. So their mental health, their spiritual well-being, their whole holistic being, and how that impacts on them as a human human being. Now, it's not something that where we say to the person, you need to pray or you need to follow a particular religion, but there is evidence in the medical literature that spirituality, believing in a higher being, is something that gives a lot of people a lot of solace and a lot of comfort. And it's not necessarily that they follow or subscribe to a particular religion, they just have the the feeling or the understanding that there is something greater than themselves, something greater than this world, that something that is there and is overseeing everything. Now, particularly in the instances of end of life, it has been shown that being spiritual or having the ability to pray or ask for help from a higher being has given people a better quality of life and actually in some instances actually increased their life beyond what was expected medically. So having an awareness of spirituality as a doctor as an, is an important element of being aware of the whole person. So when our non-Muslim friends ask us about Ramadan and the holy month of fasting, often all that they are aware of is that we are asked to abstain from food during the period of dawn till dusk. And when you have a conversation with them, they may be surprised to hear that actually you are also obliged to abstain from water and drinking. Now this is particularly hard, but it is something that, that is important for us. And we, when we have this conversation with our non-Muslim friends, they are often very surprised at this. But it's not just the food and drink that we abstain from. We abstain from ill thoughts about others, speaking badly of others, and we try to be kind and generous towards other people. So these are all elements of spirituality. These are things that make us feel better, but also take us closer to God. And it's very important for us to try and do this throughout, our, throughout the year and throughout our lives, but particularly during the holy month of Ramadan, where we are encouraged to be much more religiously aware and much more spiritual. So being spiritual doesn't just mean praying, although praying is an important element of, of our religion and spirituality. So being spiritual may be being kind to your neighbor, giving your neighbors gifts. So it doesn't matter if your neighbor is Muslim or non-Muslim. Giving them gifts, speaking well to them, being kind and generous is something that will help us increase our spirituality. But also, in this day and age, it will help us improve the image of Islam and give the non-Muslims an idea that Muslims are kind, generous, loving people who are basically just the same as everyone else and want to get on with everyone else and interact with the society at large. So being kind and generous to others, whether they're Muslim or non-Muslim, is a very important element of the holy month of Ramadan and something that we need to be aware of and actively try to participate in. Also, it has been said in the Holy Quran, in uh, verse, chapter 20, verse 81, the Quran states, Eat of the good and wholesome things that we have provided for your sustenance, but indulge not in excess. So what that means is that we should not overeat during the holy month of Ramadan. Well, we should not overeat generally, but we should certainly not overeat in the holy month of Ramadan and be aware of those who are less fortunate than ourselves. The poor, the destitute in, the, in, this, in this country, but also in the world generally. And it's actually really interesting that in the UK now, with things such as austerity and the cuts that the government has instituted, people who would never previously have had to access this are accessing things such as soup kitchens, food banks, having to consider whether they need to heat their homes or pay for food for their children. And this is a really sorry situation that we have got ourselves into. And how can we as Muslims think about this and try to interact with this situation and do something towards this? So one suggestion might be that 
During the month of Ramadan, we visit and participate in soup kitchens or distributing food at food banks. So this is something that is highly recommended that we participate in, in helping those who are less fortunate than ourselves. And if we do this for everyone, Muslims and non-Muslims alike, again, it will help improve the image of Islam immensely. So being kind and generous to our friends, family, neighbors, and society at large is a big element of the holy month of Ramadan and something that we should actively try to be uh, part of and take part in and participate. Also, our body is not our body. It is a trust given to us, an amana given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we are advised not to abuse our body. So what that means is that we should not overeat and not eat food, foods that are unhealthy for us. And uh, Imam Ali salam has said, and is a well-known hadith of his, that fill your stomach one-third with food, one-third with water, and one-third with air. What that means is, do not eat to the point where you are totally full. Leave a third of your stomach empty and you will be better for this, both physically and mentally. So we can see that we are advised very strongly by, by the Holy Prophet and the Imams that physical health and particularly with regard to eating is given very high importance in Islam. And it's something that we need to be aware of. And during the month of Ramadan, think how can we actively try to take part in this and become more aware of what we are consuming and what we are putting into our bodies. So one third food, one third water, one third air, i.e. empty. So this is something that will be hopefully helpful for us going forward, but particularly during the month of Ramadan. So being less concerned about food and what we are eating actually increases our awareness of God. Now it might, might sound strange, but how does this work? During our normal day-to-day -day life, three times a day, we are concerned about food and eating. So at breakfast, lunch and dinner, sometimes some people more than this, unfortunately, they are concerned with eating all the time and they eat constantly, which is not a healthy habit to have anyway. But for most people, at least three times a day, we are concerned about eating. During the holy month of Ramadan, this aspect of our daily lives is changed in that we only eat twice a day at dawn and dusk. So there's only two times in the day where we are concerned with eating. During the rest of the day, we have time to contemplate, to think about higher things, to involve ourselves in prayer and supplication. And this is something that hopefully will bring us closer to God, increase our piety and increase our awareness of the higher being and what is outside of our own obvious realm and things that are important for us to consider and think about in our day-to-day -day lives, but particularly during the holy month of Ramadan. So bringing us closer to God through the elements of prayer and supplication, but also just generally contemplating. You don't have to physically sit on the prayer mat and pray. You can just think about God and spend time when you would have been eating, maybe just contemplating the higher things of life and the things that are beyond our natural environment. So during the holy month of Ramadan, we can try to practice some of this restraint by abstaining from and not enjoying the uh, process of eating and drinking, which we spend a lot of time in our lives doing. So hopefully again, that will help us bring us closer to God and help increase our levels of spirituality and piety. So as well as restraining from things that we enjoy, we are encouraged to think about others, as we've already mentioned, and be more compassionate to them. So during the holy month of Ramadan, as well as giving our time, it is encouraged that we give more in charity. So uh, it has been proven in the UK that the Muslim population is the most generous throughout the year, but particularly during the holy month of Ramadan, we are advised to be more generous and give more charity to the many needy causes that there are both in the UK and in the world at large. So being aware of those around us who are needy of our help and assistance, whether that be through giving donations, giving supplies, these are things that we are encouraged to do and actively participate in during the holy month of Ramadan, being charitable and kind and generous to others. Also, another thing that helps improve our spirituality is that of community spirit. So during the holy month, we are naturally, by the process of fasting, brought together as a community. So whether that be in our family, spending time with our family during uh, opening and breaking the fast, or in the wider community, often the Muslim community gets together and will have iftar where they break the fast at the mosque. 
And again, this is a fantastic opportunity to build community and again is another way that we can increase our spirituality and closeness to God because God has said, if you wish to be good to me, then be good to your fellow man. And that is the way that we gain God's pleasure and increase in our spirituality and piety. Being good to our fellow man is the best thing that we can do to help improve our standing in the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And I think in conclusion what we can say is that a fast just of food and water is not a fast. A fast devoid of spirit and blessing does not constitute a fast. So by encouraging ourselves and our family and friends to remember these things, to try to be actively involved in charity of time, money, supplies, meeting our community, being kind and generous to others, even with a kind word, maybe greeting a colleague at work who you didn't used to greet. Simple things like this will hopefully increase our personal well-being and increase our spirituality and hopefully, inshallah, give us reward in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Health and Fasting. We hope to see you again on a subsequent episode. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.